Ron DeSantis, he is winning and he is winning big in the state of Florida. And this is scaring the living hell out of the left, so they have to lie about it. Will be Goldberg over on The View, which is the repository of all knowledge and wisdom in the universe. She suggested that no one is actually teaching critical race theory. Again, this is part of the ongoing left-wing series. It's not happening, and it's good that it is. Here is Whoopi Goldberg. He was conflating it with CRT, which is something I think you can have a conversation, critical race theory. I wish somebody would show me a, a book. Okay, show me the school book that everybody is talking about that is teaching CRT. It's at I want Harvard to, Law I School, want to see, actually. Yeah, I want to see, no, no, I want to see the one that they're doing in the, in, with the little, in, with with the the little, little kids. kids. I, I want to see I that I haven't seen that one. Just no, one at Harvard. but I'm demanding it now it because exist. I'm tired of it. It's, it you know, that book that you think your kids have been learning from is a book about what has happened in our country. See, th- there it is. I love that. I love that. It's not happening, and it's good that it is. And it's good that it is. It's stuff that's happening in our country, but also it's not in the book. It's not in the book. Guys, critical race theory exists. I've talked about it many times on the show. It is essentially a theory that has been mainlined into mainstream history by places like the New York Times. The 1619 Project is replete with all of the echoes of critical race theory. Meanwhile, Don Lemon is going even further over on CNN. I'm not, I didn't even know he still had a job, but apparently he does. He says it's going to be illegal in Florida to teach slavery in schools. No, it's not, you idiot. Slavery was political at one point. Martin Luther King, obviously, as Republicans love to talk about, you know, every January, this was a political movement, and no one wanted to learn about that then either. If that's the kind of lineage he wants to join, you know, people who are saying don't talk about the political thinking um, of marginalized groups, he's welcome to do it. So slavery uh, became illegal. Now it's going to be illegal to teach slavery in schools. It seems it seems really odd. I mean, where is he going to draw the line? Draw Somewhere the line? between abolition and now. I don't know where Ron DeSantis considers the, the history versus the now. These are the objective journalismers. That's Audie Cornish, an anchor and correspondent. Um, no, slavery has been taught in every American school of which I am aware for generations. The hell are you talking about? But again, they're just going to lie. The problem is that most Americans can see through these lies. So the left are having a real tough time, which is why, again, they just have to keep exaggerating and exaggerating and exaggerating. MSNBC's Michael Bachelot says books are being banned in Florida. Okay, guys, you can get any book you want in Florida. You just can't mainstream it to the kiddies. I don't understand why this is so tough to accept. You can go down to your local porn shop and you can buy a copy of Playboy. That doesn't mean it should be taught in third grade. I don't understand why you guys can't seem to understand that free speech is not the chief issue in the classroom. In the classroom, the chief issue is what gets taught to our small people. Yeah, it's it's so irritating. But I guess this all comes down to this notion that children are basically just small adults who are vested with full autonomy, up to and including deciding their own sex and the ability of whether they ought to, you know, mutilate their own genitals and such. Anyway, here is MSNBC's Michael Bischloss. This genius, by the, right, by the way, writes speeches for Joe Biden. If you quizzed public school elementary school kids, high school kids today about John F. Kennedy, the administration, what would they know? He got shot. Maybe that's it. Or or they might say, uh, is that the guy who's coming back to run run with Donald Trump next year? And they also might say, you know, was it the idea of our founders, as we're now seeing in Joe and Mika's home state of Florida, was it was it their idea that books would be banned and taken out of classrooms right. and you'd have lists saying these books are OK, these books are not? Yes, the founders would have been fine with that. Are you insane? Yes, the founders would have been fine with the notion that there are certain books that do not belong in the classrooms of small children. I mean, honest to God, Michael Bischloss is supposed to be a historian. Has ever read a book? It's unbelievable. You write, read a read a book. Read a biography of John Quincy Adams and see how John Adams constructed his education, like book for book. Do you think he was like, well, you know, John Quincy does have to see everything. Here's some wood carvings of a naked lady. I'm going to send those over to John Quincy and we'll see how he handles that. Like, what is wrong with you people? But you're cruising for a bruising. So if this is the way you want to play it, then I guess this is how it's going to go. All right, I'll get to more on this in just one second. First, I've been telling you, I'm not getting enough sleep. Okay, my kids are just killing me lately. They are waking me up at all hours of the night. And in the morning, we got a puppy. That means the puppy's keeping me up. We're going to have a baby. The baby will keep me up. I need my Black Rifle Coffee. It's that simple. Black Rifle Coffee Company is on a mission also to build a support network for veterans, first responders, and law enforcement by serving you the best coffee you've ever had. Thanks to your support, that dream has now become a reality. 
This year alone, Black Rifle Coffee donated over 120,000 bags of coffee to veterans and first responders while expanding their own team of active duty service members, veterans, and veteran family members. If you want to continue supporting this incredible company, head on over to BlackRifleCoffee.com. Use promo code Shapiro at checkout for 10% off your purchase and your first coffee club order. Again, Black Rifle Coffee is roasted by a veteran-led team of brilliant coffee graders here in the United States. Their coffee is awesome, but they also have a great mission. And you can do both of those things all at once. The coffee is truly one of a kind. Head on over to BlackRifleCoffee.com. Use promo code Shapiro for 10% off. You can also find Black Rifle Coffee in grocery and convenience stores near you. That's Black Rifle Coffee, America's coffee. Daily Wire, we're constantly hiring. And it's very difficult to find the right people for jobs. You know, really, we have a lot of open jobs in the United States right now and not enough good people to fill them. This is why if you are hiring right now, you can't afford to ignore ZipRecruiter. If you need to hire for your business and you want an easier way to find qualified candidates, head on over to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Try it for free. ZipRecruiter uses powerful technology to find the right candidates for your job. If you see a candidate you like, you can easily send them a personal invite so they're more likely to apply. Their user-friendly dashboard makes it easy to filter, review, and rate your candidates all from one place. Let ZipRecruiter help you find the best people for all your roles. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within day one. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Try ZipRecruiter for free. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash D-A-I-L-Y-W-I-R-E. ZipRecruiter is indeed the smartest way to hire. We've been using it here at Daily Wire ourselves for years. You should do the exact same thing. Head on over to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. And meanwhile, in other news, the Department of Justice is now suing Google, apparently seeking up to break up Google's business brokering digital advertising across much of the internet. It's kind of a fascinating thing because there is, in fact, a bipartisan consensus that Google has effectively a monopoly in the ad business. Filed in federal court in Virginia, according to the Wall Street Journal, the case alleges that Google abuses monopoly power in the ad tech industry, hurting web publishers and advertisers that try to use competing products. Eight states, including California and New York, have joined the DOJ lawsuit. The lawsuit asks the court to unwind Google's anti-competitive acquisitions, such as its 2008 purchase of ad-serving company DoubleClick, and call for a divestiture of its ad exchange. A.G. Merrick Garland said at a press conference, for 15 years, Google has pursued a course of anti-competitive conduct that has allowed it to ha halt the rise of rival technologies, manipulate auction mechanics, insulate itself from competition, and force advertisers and publishers to use its tools. By calling for specific divestitures from Google's ad tech business, the Justice Department went further in seeking a breakup than some antitrust experts had even expected. This is why Alphabet shares fell by about 2% in trading on Tuesday. The ad tech tools controlled by Google facilitate much of the buying and selling of digital ads that helps fund online publishers. Google's businesses include tool publishers can use to offer ad space, a product for advertisers to buy those slots, and an exchange that links the bidders with the web pages. But there are a lot of people who are deeply worried that Google has been basically manipulating all of this to their own ends, some of those ends political. Alphabet gets about 80% of its business from advertising. The Justice Department's new suit targets the subset of that ad business that brokers the buying and selling of ads on the other websites and apps as well. The idea is that they are privileging their own above other people's. Last year, Google offered to split off parts of its ad tech business into a separate company under the Alphabet, Alphabet umbrella. Well, one of the things that, that's sort of fascinating here is, is just how wide the bipartisan acceptance of the attack on Google is. So, you know, there, there are always a couple of, of sort of theories when it comes to monopoly power. One is that monopoly power should be broken if it harms the consumer. The other is monopoly power should be broken if it represents too heavy a percentage of the market. I tend to toward the first theory, if, if it harms consumers. I, I certainly can say that Google's monopoly on ads has harmed consumers, for sure. That is a very real thing. And so the possibility that the DOJ is moving to break up the ad business probably is not necessarily a bad thing. Now, I will say that the same people who are looking to crack down on Google's ad business from the Biden administration are also looking to crack down on free speech over at Twitter. Yet again, there's another study out, so many studies out every single day, a study out showing violence is increasing. Well, yeah, we know. And now they're blaming Twitter. According to the Washington Post, attacks on U.S. Jews and gays accelerate as hate speech grows on Twitter. Um, maybe the attacks on U.S. Jews and gays are accelerating, not because of Twitter per se, but because you took the cops off the streets and told them not to police anymore. I've noticed that they are accelerating, particularly in areas where you've been weak when it comes to policing crime. But you got to find some way to uh, crack down on the only possible free speech mechanism on the Internet these days. New research to be released later this month by the Misinformation Tracker Network Contagion Research Institutes suggests a connection between real world, inc real world incidents and variations of the word groomer, often aimed at gays and suggesting they are adults bent on seducing children. Although polls indicate a significant minority of the population believes otherwise, gay people are not more likely to be predators than straight people. 
So now they're trying to claim that, that the rise of the use of the term groomer on Twitter is leading to attacks on gay people. I'm going to have to see the, uh, the evidence on that. The answer is they actually have none. At the beginning of this Washington Post story, they begin with um, the FBI charging a Florida man with making a detailed online threat to murder 100 gay people. He had also threatened to kill black people and tear gas the synagogue. Apparently, he liked 11 tweets before his arrest. Quote, there is no evidence that what Albert saw on Twitter inspired him to make his own posts. So there's not even a link there. See, th this is the problem. I I'm perfectly fine with the DOJ actually showing with 149 pages of supporting evidence that, that the internet is being skewed by Google. I do have a, a fairly significant problem with the notion that the same people who are complaining about Google are also complaining that Twitter's free speech mechanisms are damaging to the United States to the extent that they're actually facilitating violence. Alrighty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting into Mike Pence apparently finding classified documents over in his home. Also, we'll be getting into the New York governor refusing to reinstate those healthcare workers she fired for not getting vaccinated. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us.